Why did she almost drop out of the Harry Potter movies? How come she ended up in therapy when the franchise was over? And what do her tits have to do with feminism? Hi, I'm Joy, and let's get it straight. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. The struggles of becoming Hermione. She was only 11 when we got to know her as Hermione Granger. A massive debut for anybody, especially for a little girl who at the time couldn't really comprehend how big it was and definitely couldn't grasp the concept of what it would become. Emma Watson was obsessed with acting since she was about six. Emma had only had a few appearances on the school stage and was taking acting classes from an Oxford teacher when the casting for J.K. Rowling's film adaptation started. The nine-year-old girl was picked from a lineup in her school gym as she impressed the producers with her confidence. But Emma still had to go through eight auditions before finally landing the part alongside Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert Grint. Though Joanne Rowling confessed she knew that Emma was perfect for the role right away. You are going to be able to play a very bright, articulate girl with conviction because that's who you are. It was just obvious that the little actress shared the same obsessive perfectionist nature that Hermione had, as well as a tendency to overdo things. My favourite line is... I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed, or worse, expelled. <laughs> the first movie of the franchise marked the beginning of 10 years of worldwide success and adoration. With the release of each film, we watched Watson grow and her acting skills improve, as well as her army of fans expand and the numbers on the main cast's paychecks increase. By the way, Emma wasn't aware of her earnings and received only $75 per week from her parents. By 17, her net worth had reached $20 million. The teenager acknowledged she could afford to not work for a single day in her life and that she got the freedom to do whatever she wants or rather not do what she doesn't want to. Despite the universal success, Watson nearly left the Harry Potter world in the middle of the series. Upon the release of the fourth movie, the actress stated she wanted to get back to getting an education. Besides that, she simply got tired of eating and going to the bathroom when she was told to, according to a horrible filming schedule. And signing up for the Order of the Phoenix would inevitably lead to starring in the rest of the upcoming Harry Potter movies. Thankfully, Warner Brothers knew they couldn't lose their Hermione and came up with more accommodating terms for Emma. Eventually, Watson admitted she could never let Hermione go. Alas, success and fame at an early age always come with a price. For Emma Watson, it was self-identity issues and anxiety throughout the different stages of filming in the series and afterwards. As a little girl, she let it slip during an interview that the flashes on the red carpet and crowds intimidated her. The cameras, the flashing, it was just... <sighs> scary. And as we know from her later interviews, the anxiety of being in public still hasn't left her. Due to the fact Emma wasn't experienced when she got the part, the vast admiration from the audience instilled another anxiety in her. As she got older, the actress became overcome with imposter syndrome, thinking that maybe someone else could portray the beloved character better. It got even worse for Watson when she came across some comments from viewers who thought the actress was overrated. Emma was 29 when she opened up to British Vogue that the guilt she felt about being gifted with the role of Hermione and everything that came with it forced her into therapy. I've wrestled a lot with the guilt around that. That's of, interesting. Of being like, I should be enjoying this more. Yeah, I should be yeah. more excited and I'm actually really struggling. Watson added that she'd faced moments when it got so big that she almost had vertigo in her own life and felt disconnected. Then she would turn to family to get grounded, saying, there's a whole big existence and identity that I have that's really important and weighted and solid that has nothing to do with any of that. It was in that memorable interview that Emma Watson dropped a word that would become a huge point of realization for single people around the globe. But wait a bit till we get there. Let's first find out what happened to Emma after the Harry Potter movies were over. Re-identifying Emma. Well, since then, the amount of adoration hasn't decreased much. The movies continue to gather kids and grown-ups who re-watch all eight parts regularly, giving it up for Hermione. But Emma then faced an identity crisis as she realized it was not only the fans who'd been identifying her with her character for 10 years. The actress herself had done so, even before she was cast to play the young wizard, not knowing whether she would be able to play anything else or what she wanted to do with her life. Watson felt the strong need to redefine herself and started out with cutting her hair off. Post 
post poster yeah. and post school. Um, I definitely want to keep making movies, but I just don't want to limit myself. There's so many different things I'm interested in. I just I want to I want to try everything. She decided to return to her studies and get a bachelor's degree in English literature from Brown University. Besides that, she did fabulous modeling for Burberry and Lancome campaigns and lent her name to a clothing line, People Tree. Dame Vivienne Westwood herself awarded Watson the Style Icon Award from British Elle. Since then, Emma hasn't stopped her modeling and fashion endeavors. Though the actress was genuinely proud of the work she did within the Harry Potter franchise, she wished to be recognized for something else. Watson voiced Princess P in The Tale of Despero and appeared in Ballet Shoes and My Week with Marilyn while the franchise was still on a roll. But her first significant post Hermione role was of Sam Button in the drama The Perks of Being a Wallflower, opposite rising stars Logan Lerman and Ezra Miller. Two years later, she would work with Lerman again in Darren Aronofsky's epic biblical drama Noah, starring Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly. In between, the actress starred in The Bling Ring, receiving almost unanimous praise from critics for her portrayal of Nikki. Watson joined Seth Rogen, James Franco, and others in playing exaggerated versions of themselves in the apocalyptic comedy This Is The End. Remember her dropping that smashing F-bomb? Emma said she could not pass up the opportunity to make her first comedy and work with some of the best comedians in the world right now. Sadly, 2015 wasn't too kind to Emma. She starred in Colonia opposite Daniel Brawl and Regression opposite Ethan Hawke, but neither of those thrillers were received favorably. The actress announced she was taking a hiatus from filming to focus on her personal development and her women's rights work. This turned out to be a very fruitful decision that contributed to the feminist movement around the world. Keep watching to find out why. Given that Emma read one book a week while on a gap year, the next role she took up seems to have been waiting for her. It was Belle in Beauty and the Beast. Previously, Emma turned down the role of Cinderella in another live-action Disney adaptation because she didn't connect with the character. But the smart, kind-hearted beauty Belle, who's in love with books and yearns for social independence, was a perfect match for Emma. Yeah, I wanted her to, to, be, to be powerful, yeah. which, I mean, she already was, to be honest. And that's a great role for you to play. Watson's performance garnered universal acclaim, and the movie joined the list of one of the highest grossing in history. Later that year, we saw Watson playing in The Circle opposite Tom Hanks. The role of a young tech worker of a powerful internet corporation who investigates the topics of privacy, surveillance, and freedom suited Emma too. And so did her latest part so far of Meg in the newest film adaptation of Little Women. Do you like how I look? No, I don't. Why not? Joining the star cast of Saoirse Ronan, Florence Pugh, Laura Dern, Timothy Chalamet, and the incomparable Meryl Streep, what could be further proof that Emma Watson has finally made her way out of being a one-role actress and left the post-Harry Potter struggle behind? Probably only becoming a symbol of 21st century feminism. Self-partnered activist. Some other star might be happy with simply showing off her social standing, but not Emma with her oh-so-Hermione-ish personality. First of all, Watson was appointed a UN Women Goodwill Ambassador. Such a tiny step, right? Then, in front of other ambassadors, she launched the campaign He for She, which not only stands for gender equality, but actually urges men to advocate for it. This is the first campaign of its kind at the UN. We want to try and galvanize as many men and boys as possible to be advocates for change. While nervously making her speech at the UN headquarters in New York City, the actress touched on being called bossy at eight and sexualized by the media at 14 the understanding of what feminism actually is and how man-hating's gotta stop. I should be able to make decisions about my own body. I think... Instantly, the speech unleashed a flood of threats from haters. But Emma isn't one to back down. She responded, if they were trying to put me off, it did the opposite. Later, Watson was accused of becoming too feminist and shoving it down people's throats. What a surprise, haters keep on hating. Who cares? Especially when a Nobel Prize laureate Malala Yousafzai reveals she decided to call herself a feminist after hearing your speech. The actress activist has traveled to Bangladesh, Zambia and Uruguay to promote education for girls and the need for women's political participation. She's been speaking on gender equality whenever and wherever it'll reach people's ears. I 
feel uncomfortable taking up as much space as I'm taking up and not speaking about any of this stuff. It just doesn't feel right in there. Watson started a feminist Goodreads book club, Our Shared Shelf, to share ideas and encourage discussion. And she helped launch a legal helpline provided by the Rights of Women charity for people who have suffered sexual harassment in the workplace. In the midst of all of it, she did a photo for Vanity Fair with her breasts partially visible and was accused of hypocrisy. Feminism is not a stick with which to beat other women, she replied, but is instead about freedom, liberation and equality. I really don't know what my tits have to do with it. There was another great thing Emma did without even noticing. In a groundbreaking interview with British Vogue, she invented a term on the go that was revolutionary and resonated with many. I never believed the whole I'm happy single spiel. I was like, this is spiel. It took me a long time, but I'm very happy. I call it being self-partnered. When self-partnered drop, people from all over the world started praising Watson for pinpointing their relationship status by choice, precisely the way it was, without the negativity hidden behind the term single. Did you know that you would start this entire revolution? No. I literally said it as a throwaway comment, thinking it would go no further. Uh, and then I woke up the next morning and I'm getting, like, my phone's blowing up and I don't know why. As for Emma Watson's status, she's keeping it self-partnered, which doesn't exclude dating by any means. A year ago, the actress was spotted kissing businessman Leo Robinson. And just recently, they were seen together again grabbing coffee. Who knows, maybe soon enough Emma's boyfriend will make her want to change her status to partnered. We'll follow the news of the actress, activist, model and, oh yes, certified yoga instructor. And we'll keep you up to date about her film announcements, social accomplishments or fashion projects. Meanwhile, we're dying to know, could you imagine anyone else as Hermione? And are you self-partnered or single? Tell us in the comments and stay awesome.